welcome to the Weekly Market Wrap-Up, I'm Hannah Bernard. Markets fought back pessimism this week, bolstered by the Bank of Canada's shocking interest rate cut on Wednesday and the European Central Bank's stimulus announcement on Thursday. It was a one-two punch and for now the bears are down for the count. How long will they stay down? Let's find out. U.S. stocks took a big leap Thursday following the Bank of Canada and ECB news. The Dow Jones Industrial Average spiked 259 points on Thursday of 1.48% to close at 17,813. The S&P 500 had an even better Thursday than the Dow, jumping 1.53% to close at 2,063. And the tech-heavy Nasdaq delivering the biggest jump added 83 points or 1.78% in overall value to close at 4,750. Now let's turn to Canadian markets, which saw the TSX hit its highest level in two weeks as investors cheered on the ECB stimulus and the Bank of Canada rate cut. The five-day chart tells the tale. Rate cut surprise equals a 250-point jump on the TSX on Wednesday, followed by a 204-point jump on Thursday. The TSX closed at 14,763 and is up 3.2% in value in just two days. The TSX Venture Exchange gained only slightly over the week, closing at nearly break-even on Thursday at 678.97. The big news driving global markets on Thursday was the announcement by the European Central Bank that it will drop 1.3 trillion euros into bond buying. The ECB says it will make monthly bond purchases of 60 billion euros from this March through to September 2016. So why did the European Central Bank make this move? Well, the ECB has a problem. Europe is a mess. Its economy shows signs of going into a deflationary spiral, which is a period of falling prices that could trigger a major depression. To stimulate the economy, the ECB will buy bonds, pumping money into the economy and keeping long-term interest rates low. The U.S. Federal Reserve did the same thing to help prop up the U.S. economy after the 2007 financial crisis. And it was only a few months ago that the Fed finally ended its monthly bond buying program. So what are the challenges? Well, unlike the U.S., the ECB has to deal with 19 different countries, each with its own budget and tax laws. Even worse, many of these countries simply don't get along. The stimulus program is good news for investors and for tourists as well, as the euro is going to be really cheap for a while. All right, enough about Europe. Let's talk about Canada and the real shocking news of the week. The Bank of Canada surprised the world Wednesday with an unexpected one quarter of a point cut to its interest rate on overnight loans between commercial banks. The cut is the Bank of Canada's first change in the bank rate in four plus years and drops the interest rate to 0.75%, the first cut since April of 2009. So why is the Bank of Canada making this move? Bank of Canada Governor Stephen Polez says the economy has been suffering from the effects of an oil shock, which will reduce the income flowing into Canada and could trigger a deflationary cycle, as is the concern in Europe. The rate cut is designed to bolster the Canadian economy and it will absorb the shock. It will mean lower mortgage rates for Canadian homeowners and increased consumer spending. On the downside, Wednesday's rate cut hammered the Canadian dollar, triggering a one-day 2.3% drop in value. The loonie hit a low of 0.8058 on Thursday, finally to close just a notch higher. Now to winners and losers in our picks for the week. The winner for this week is Netflix Inc, ticker symbol NFLX. Some investors are kicking themselves. That is, if they didn't invest in Netflix before this week. The company's share price increased 60 points just on Wednesday to $409.28 per share. But don't let me tell you, let's hear it from my man Kramer himself. House of pleasure. The work done by John Blackledge at Cowan and Scott Devitt at Stiefel was exemplary and worth praising to the skies because you had plenty of opportunity to act on their upgrades. They gave you a lot of time, both of which were rolled out when the stock was trading at 323. Look at this thing, 323, and it's right now trading at 409. 
The loser for this week is Eldorado Gold Corporation, ticker symbol ELD.TO. The company's stock plunged this week after it announced that they expect to produce fewer ounces of gold at a higher cost than last year. Eldorado shares were down over 18% on Wednesday, settling in at $7.66. Well, those are our winners and losers for this week, and now it's time to check in on the gains that you could have locked in by following the weekly watch list from Robert James and Viral Stocks. That's enough about this week. Now let's turn to BayStreet.ca's look at the week ahead and the snapshot of what analysts are forecasting for companies whose earning reports are coming out next week. Here are three U.S. stocks to watch. First up on Tuesday is AT&T with an EPS forecast of 56 cents compared to 53 cents in the prior quarter. The telephone giant said last week it will record 10 billion in non-cash charges for Q4, relating to changes in pension and benefit plans and declining consumer demand for older phone and data products. Next up on Wednesday is Boeing Co. with an EPS forecast of $2.07 compared to $1.88 in the prior quarter. And finally on Thursday is Google Inc. with an EPS forecast of $5.86 compared to $4.96 in the prior quarter. And now here are three Canadian stocks to watch next week. First up on Tuesday is Canadian National Railway Company with an EPS forecast of $0.97 cents compared to $0.76 cents in the prior quarter. The carrier was in the news this month when it hammered out a tentative deal with the Teamsters. The four-year agreement would provide wage increases and benefit improvements to about 180 employees. Next up on Wednesday is Canadian Oil Sands Limited with an EPS forecast of 23 cents compared to 40 cents in the prior year quarter. Finally on Thursday is Potash Corporation of Saskatchewan Inc. with an EPS forecast of 46 cents compared to 31 cents in the prior year quarter. And that wraps it up. Thanks again so much for joining us for another weekly market wrap up. Before you head out for the weekend, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel or podcast on iTunes and find us on Facebook and on Twitter. For Vowel Network News and BayStreet.ca, I'm Hannah Bernard.